continuing on with the dialogue Jesus is having with these folks that he had just fed. John 6, 35-38, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. These are the people that have just received that great blessing, that great feeding, and uh, they still don't believe that he is the Messiah. The question arises, who will believe in Jesus? Jesus said it's those that the Father gives him. Well, who is it that the Father gives him? 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So as we just read, the will of God is for all to come to repentance, but not all will repent. God knows who's going to repent. And everyone that's going to repent, he gives to Jesus. When we come to Jesus, it's because the Father gave us to Jesus. And look at the security we get from Jesus. He said, uh, I will not reject you. There's no rejection in Jesus. Um, every one of us have been rejected by somebody. But Jesus doesn't reject us. And he says, I'll not cast you out. Doesn't mean you don't have the freedom to leave on your own accord. But Jesus isn't going to cast you out. That's your own decision. John 6, 39-40 This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing, but I should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus didn't come to do his own will. He said that many times. He came to do the will of the Father. Jesus lived his whole life serving God, doing what God the Father wanted him to do. And that's what God is calling us to, too. In Galatians 5.24, it says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I hear you already saying, yeah, I wish that was true. I, I, I got a lot of things I've been doing that, uh, you think Jesus will hang on to me? Repent. Confess your sin. Turn to the Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, I shouldn't be living like that. Help me to overcome this. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from evil, Lord. He'll not cast you out, ever. Desire what God has for you. Seek it out. And you'll not be disappointed. Jesus isn't going to lose one person that comes to him. In John 6.39, we just read it, but the NLT version says, And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. Jesus is doing God's will, and it's the will of God that Jesus doesn't lose one of us. All those who come to Jesus will have everlasting life. Jesus will raise the believers up on the last day. Anything Jesus said cannot be changed. I'm going to get raised up on the last day. Romans 8.11 says, But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Uh, that's exciting news. That's good news. We can trust God. John 6, 41 and 42 says, Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Those who should know who Jesus is were skeptical. And they only saw Jesus in the flesh and blood. They only saw him in our natural body. Isn't this the son of Joseph? They couldn't see him as the son of God. It was not widely spread that Jesus was born of a virgin. So we have to give them that. But the Bible tells them, if they would have just read it, 
that the Messiah was to be born of a virgin. John 8, 41, You are doing the deeds of your father. They said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Well, Jesus was telling them that their father was not God, that their father was the devil. And he said they were doing the deeds of their father. Many thought Jesus was an illegitimate child. That's why they said we were not born of fornication. That Mary was pregnant before uh, the end of their engagement period was up. And, uh, well, this must be a little fornication going on here. And we're not born of fornication. We have one father. That's God. The miracle of the fish and the loaves wasn't enough for them to believe in Jesus. You know, the Bible says signs and wonders will follow them that believe. But it's not the signs and wonders that bring people to Jesus. But it's the Holy Spirit working in the hearts of man, drawing them to Jesus. That's what brings people to Jesus. John six forty three and 47, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. Murmuring and grumbling is the way that people seek to persuade others to accept disbelief. If you ever want to find somebody that's trying to dissuade you from believing in the truth, they're going to be murmuring and grumbling, oh, this guy this, that person that. They always got complaints. So, oh, who do they think they are? And the complaints go on and on. Uh, and that's what they're doing with Jesus. Uh, and Jesus telling them, well, it's no use for you to grumble. It's only the divine power of God that can break through the hardness of heart. God doesn't coerce or force anyone to come to him. The Father's in the business of drawing people to him, drawing people to himself. God takes an unwilling heart and by his grace causes that person to desire the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you can probably remember that day where you said, well, let me try Jesus, or let me give Jesus a chance, or... Maybe Jesus is the Messiah. I don't know what happened in your life. But I know it was the Father drawing you to Jesus. Jesus always enforces the truth of who he is. In Isaiah 54, 13, it says, All your sons will be taught of the Lord, and the well-being of your sons will be great. Well, here is Jesus the Lord doing the teaching. But they don't believe he's the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 12 says, But it was to us that God revealed these things by his Spirit. For his Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's Spirit, not the world's Spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. John 6, 48-59 I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourself. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, 
So he who eats me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Here we have the Lord teaching in Capernaum. Jesus continues to, to compare himself to this manna that came down out of heaven. It's quite obvious manna did not produce everlasting life. In verse 51 it said, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Well, to the unbeliever, Jesus is talking about cannibalism. He's saying, well, throw me in a pot, cook me up, and let's all eat. Well, that makes no sense. That doesn't make sense to me, or to you, or to anyone. Jesus is not into cannibalism. Those who will not believe cannot understand the relationship Jesus is giving of being the bread of life and the giving of his flesh. Entrance into the kingdom is not by understanding. It's not by works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God not as a result of works, that no one may boast. We have to enter the kingdom of God by faith. And it's by faith we take the body of Christ. It's by faith we drink the blood of the body of Christ. Hebrews 2.14 says, Since therefore the children share in the flesh and the blood, he himself likewise partook of the same nature, that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil. So Jesus destroyed death by becoming a curse for us. Jesus has given his flesh for us and given his body for us. And if we eat that flesh and drink that blood, feed our souls as often as we can on the word of God. Looking at food or preparing food or setting food on a table for others to eat, that's not going to satisfy our hunger. I can cook you up a storm and set everything down there and watch you eat. I'm still going to be hungry when you're finished. We have to eat our own food to be satisfied. We have to partake in the word of God to be filled with the food that comes from heaven. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And in John 6.35, it says, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. Our life is in Jesus Christ. We only have death in ourselves. We have temporal bodies. People say, Look into yourself and find God. I look into myself, I see death and destruction. But when I look to Jesus, and I let him come and enter into my life. I see life and life everlasting. In verse 58 we read, He who eats this bread will live forever. I'm ready to live forever, and I hope you are too.